well. Um, welcome to everybody this evening. I'm Jen Kelly and I'm live with Adirond UK Live. And I've got Bradley with me this evening, as always. He's going to be looking at all your questions. Um, so any questions, any comments you've got, please put them in the comments box so we can actually look at all your questions as we go through the evening. Today's a really different kind of um, subject that we're actually doing and that we're tackling. Um, Bradley kind of almost given me a test this week, so we've <laughs> had a little bit of interest and a little bit of fun. What we want you to actually be able to do, and I know what a lot of you would love to be able to do with your wigs, is to create that catwalk look that you actually see on the catwalks. You actually see them at the um, big galas, the big balls and the big events and all the different awards that people actually go to. You see it all on the red carpet. And it's the kind of looks that you'd like to create with your wigs. Um, and that's what we're going to show you tonight. We're going to look at some very simple tricks of how you can recreate some of those looks. And we're looking at looks from Versace, Brandon Maxwell, Celine, Anna Sui, and many, many more different designers. Um, with wigs and the collections that we actually release and the colours that we actually release, we always start looking at new collections and new colours at least 18 months to two years before they're actually launched. So we're always looking forward, looking ahead of fashion, trying to predict what is going to actually happen in fashion um, in a year's time, 18 months time, two years time. So we're always forward thinking and we take a lot of our influence from a lot of different fashion designers, um, a lot of catwalk shows and also we look at leading hairdressers as well. Um, we talk to a lot of leading hairdressers about what they're actually predicting for the future for the next year, the next two years. And we try to emulate that with all of our wigs. When it's a ready to wear synthetic wig, it's a lot of a quicker process. And we can get those colors and styles out there a lot quicker. With human hair wigs, it takes a lot more designing and takes a lot more time to actually do. So that's why we do look at quite with human hair. We're looking at much more classic colors that we know will actually go on for the test of time. And you can add color and depth and actually learn to actually change that color yourself. So if you've been tuning into us over the last few months, you would have seen different um, se se sessions we've done about color in hair and why it's really kind of important and why it's really good sometimes to go into a wig boutique or into a salon that is selling wigs rather than just buying them online because you can get that um, extra little bit of help and they can personalize them for you. Um, if you're not very good at doing your hair and you want to create these different looks, they are really simple looks that we're trying yeah. to create tonight. Um, Bradley didn't make it too difficult. Well, he made it fairly, but he didn't make it too difficult for me. It just made me have to think a little bit more and think outside the box as to what we could recreate to show you. So maybe this Christmas you're meeting up with that five days of Christmas. You're meeting up with some friends you're seeing your family and you want to actually feel special about yourself. You want to give yourself that new look and actually feel really kind of empowered, I suppose, because you've got that new look and you can actually really go out there and rock your wig with that different look that we're going to create. Um, so Bradley's kind of almost given me a test this evening, Bradley. Uh -huh. Well, I will be. I mean, yes. we'll see how you get on, won't yeah. we? <laughs> <laughs> right, see how many marks out of 10 I yeah, might actually absolutely. achieve or not achieve. Um, yeah, we're going to actually show you different looks. Bradley's going to actually talk you through why he actually selected the different images. And the first image that we're going to be looking at is one by Versace. And I think you should all be able to see that. There's a little bit of kind of glare off the camera. Um, not a lot. And as you can actually see, the look that we've got is actually something that's very sleek. It looks very styled. And it's actually finished with obviously one of the Versace clips as well that we happen to have um, <laughs> this evening. <laughs> um, so you can see it's a great look. But what it is, this wig or this lady's hair is actually styled. So it's actually going back from her face, but it's not flat. There's nothing flat about it at all. So that hair was lifted. So it had that body and um, 
just to actually take that hair back for them and then the clips were actually added. Um, what was your influence on that one, Bradley? Why did you decide to choose that one? Well, Versace is a brand I've always very much enjoyed. Yep. So whenever they put any kind of presentation on, I'm always quite keen to see it. The whole premise behind it is being empowering for women. It's making women feel sexy. It's making them feel powerful, really, at the end of the day. So I think those are really important things. Um, and they also do the men's catwalk as well, which is very yeah. much focused on the same thing. But, you know, they're a little bit more creative and out there. Every single year they go for some kind of theme okay. that seems to fluctuate between westerns cowboys um gods and goddesses underwater all these different okay. things and their latest one was more on that underwater was on theme, the underwater it, really? theme but they'll bring it back to that kind of roman greek god and goddess yeah theme, which is very much in their heritage so this year's theme was all based on underwater so you saw a lot of slick back wet look hair it was accessorized um, to match that, but yeah. it also just complemented the outfit. So we've seen a lot of that also coming through recently in fashion shoots as well, and I think that will be a big thing. Moving forward moving for next forward. year. Yeah. But as you've said, there's a lot of it that's in the prep. It's not as simple as wetting your hair and pushing it back. Yep. So I thought it'd be quite interesting to see how you would do a pushed back style on a wig, because obviously you've got the hairline to do. Got the hairline well. to actually deal with it all correct. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so what I actually started with and what I'm working on this evening, this is um, our diamond from the gem collection. Um, most of you actually know and love the diamond and probably have worn it numerous times. Um, if you're not familiar with it, it's actually a human hair wig and is 18 inches in length. Um, the diamond is absolutely beautiful. It comes when it actually comes straight out of the packaging. It almost looks as if it's actually got a parting going through the centre. If you want to change that parting, you do need to wash the wig and condition it before you can actually change it and adapt that actual style that you want. So quite simply on this particular model that I'm working on now, I washed the hair and I blow dried it, but I blow dried it using a brush just to give it a little bit of lift. So I was lifting it like this to get the hair to actually dry in an upward motion so those knots were drying upwards so I could actually then sleek that hair back and I wanted that hair to actually be quite sleek I wanted the hair through the actual back as well because I know we're focusing really on the front but through the back I wanted that hair to be actually completely sleek and really nice and looking in a really nice condition for us when what I, sort of products would you have all to I use? used on that Bradley was when I actually blow dried it was just simply some mousse okay so I just put some mousse through on the actual brush and I just brushed the mousse into that root area because I didn't want to actually get the root mousse down on the middle length and ends mm -hmm. so I was just focusing really on that hairline to actually to get it go back because the actual gem collection in the diamond it comes with a lace front so it looks completely natural when we're actually looking at that front hairline so if you're trying to create this look with any wig that you might actually have at home at the moment try to make sure that you've actually got a lace edge to it or yeah. a lace front to it because by doing that it enables you to take the wig and the hair away from your face so that's a really important thing for you to actually do once we actually finished, <coughs> excuse me, drying the hair, all you would simply need to do is just gently brush it back to the position you actually want it, which is just what we're doing now. Do you want to bring her forward into the middle say, of the I? screen? Yeah. <laughs> which way? Over this way a little That's bit more? Is that yeah, better? Absolutely. Let me just move this one out of the way busy evening ahead of us we've got lots of different wigs all lined up ready to go so we're just going to slick that hair back and then take our little clip 
and it's really simple it's just on the clips you can actually see so it's very easy to actually put in um, I mean there's really no skill at all needed to actually just pop a clip into your own hair and then you can actually just achieve that very very simple look that this model is actually wearing and let me just do the other side for you as well so we have a quick question and about this piece jane while you're working on it what color is this diamond wig ah uh, I, I knew somebody would ask <laughs> is this uh, this one is one previous? that we actually colored yeah um ah. previously in another um show we were doing another evening we were doing we actually colored some wigs for you so you could see how we could actually color the human hair wigs and this is actually one of those that we've colored so what we've actually done with this particular one um because with human hair wigs you're not able to lighten them you can only add more depth and more tone to it so it started off actually it started off as the same color as this one if you can actually see it, which is a beautiful colour. It's a colour, um, 33130, so a beautiful red. It started off life as that colour, and then we actually put a darker colour through the roots, so we've done a reverse ombre on it to actually achieve this colour. So if you wanted that done, that's something you could do, but you would need to go into a salon to actually get that look, mm -hmm. really, with the actual wig. So as you can see, I've just very, very simply now popped the actual cones or clips into the actual side. Um, and if I put our Not inspiration Bradley's test in front of it and the inspiration for this look, um, as you can see, for you to go out on an evening once you've got your dress on, you know, you've got your outfit on, you're going to have a really perfect look to it. Once you've actually got your clips in, I would say if you just wanted to actually make that hair very nice and sleek at the back, you can just use a different product if you want to, just to actually keep the hair nice and soft. This is a product by Wow, and it's a very, very soft serum almost like product. It's got a nice sheen to it, so you can probably see my hands. They look probably quite shiny at the moment with that product. And I'm just gonna run it just down through the ends of that hair. And it just dresses the hair for you. I think when you're going for any kind of catwalk look that you're trying to recreate, Obviously, when it's done for the catwalk, there's been stylists involved, probably quite a lot of stylist people there actually blow drying the hair, lots and pr lots of different products. And I think it's really important to use product to actually finish your wig because that now looks really, really sleek and really very shiny. You've got your clips in and you can be just ready to actually go for the actual evening, really. Mm -hmm. That's what very do you good. think, Bradley? Very good. I think you passed with that one. Did so I pass far. with that you one? You passed with that one. Well I passed the first <laughs> test, which is quite good. But yeah, product is everything, I think, when you're actually trying to style a wig mm. and when you're actually finishing a wig off. I mean, when you look at anybody who's actually doing photo shoots, um, photo shoots in magazines, when you're looking at all your glossy magazines, you will see that everybody will have a lot of product in their hair as well just to get that perfect finish to what we actually want and always remember to accessorize it i think when you accessorize your wigs it takes them to a different level it makes them look even more natural because i think a lot of people don't really expect to actually see a wig that has got clips in it or the hair has been put up because they don't realize you can do so many different things with the wig so i think again really really important to actually look at what accessories you can actually buy to actually put into your wigs as well to give you that different look. I just want to quickly reintroduce ourselves again for any new viewers who have actually just recently joined us. 
Um, I'm Jen Kelly and we're at Adirand UK Live. I've got Bradley with me this evening. And if you could, if you've got any questions, any comments, just pop them into the comments box for me. And we can actually look at your questions as we actually go through this evening. Tonight, we're actually looking at the different looks you can recreate from the actual catwalk. Um, Bradley kind of sat there test this week, thought we'd do something a little bit more interesting, or not more interesting, but something a little bit different. Don't sleep the show yet, Jane. <laughs> Seeing we're actually, you know, this is our last one for this year. I know. Can you which, believe it? Uh, well, I can't believe the year's nearly gone. Well, I mean, I can't believe 2020 really? is even real at this point. No, actually, yeah. <laughs> it's been a very unreal year. But um, to think that 2020 is nearly over, mm. um, not many weeks left to go. And we've been doing this for half oh of the year. Gosh, yeah. Well, longer than that. We've probably be been doing seven months now. We've probably been doing this seven, eight months Um probably since the first lockdown started in Absolutely. March I started doing some videos for the company and then after that we started going live so we've been doing this for quite a while now myself mm. and Bradley um, so we're always trying to think up new things and to do something different and for all of you if there's anything you'd like to see or you'd like us to actually be able to do and show you please just send us an email or just drop us a comment um, onto our um Facebook page or Instagram page and we can actually take note of that and see different things that you might like to actually see rather than us just showing you what you we think you would like to actually see. So we're looking at different looks for 2021. Mm -hmm. So for summer 2021 we're looking at the different looks that we can try to create with your wig and make you feel as if you've actually got that completely new look with your wig and it's quite easy to achieve a lot of these looks are really easy to achieve um, when we're designing wigs we take a lot of our influence from catwalk shows from different fashion designers yeah. as well and also leading hairdressers so we're going to move on to our next look now and this is the look by Celine it is indeed and Bradley what was your reasons for choosing this particular look yeah and the test that i was set for this one so again um, with this and i'll show you yeah show the us look the piece that bradley wants me to achieve so you can see we've got really nice long unstructured hair whereas versace the hair was very structured and very sleek this is completely different again. Um, and Bradley would just tell you the reasons as to why he's actually gone for this particular look for 2021. Well, first of all, it's very cool, isn't it? It is actually It's really very cool. cool. You look at I, that, it's really quite wearable. And I think it's wearable by anybody. Yeah. As well. It's not, I think any age group, 16-year-old, mm -hmm. 26, upwards, anybody could actually wear that kind of look yeah and it would look really quite good on them as well really. yeah well i thought when you look at it you know we, we see a lot of people with curling wands with tongs straightening their hair but we're sorry using straighteners to curl their hair that's a very natural texture that you can probably achieve a lot more easier than people realize yeah so whilst it looks very, very well done because it's on the catwalk, I just think it's quite good to show people things that they can do without a lot of effort. I'm all about the effortlessly cool. <laughs> well, I think that's quite important, though. Absolutely. Because I, I do actually, I'm just going to move this little lady out of the way slightly. Off she goes. Just for now. Um, I think it is quite important because a lot of people, they're busy. We all have really busy mm. lives. We are really you know, we work hard. People want to actually go out, they want to actually have fun and enjoy themselves as yeah. well. And people don't want to be spending, you know, an hour or two hours just getting their hair to look right mm -hmm. so they can actually go out for the evening. Although saying that, and um, for all of you ladies who do have to actually wear wigs out there, you've probably got a huge advantage on us who don't, because if you've got two, you can at least style your wig the evening before the weekend before so you're actually all prepped and ready to go so that is one advantage i think that you probably do have 
that you can actually work and get your hair already styled. Well, a lot of catwalk hair is actually wigs, isn't it, Jane? A lot, of, yeah, yeah. We have a lot of session stylists who actually do come to us as a company to actually use our wigs. Because mm-hmm. um, when you actually think about it, a lot of these models, if they've got their own hair, it might not be especially very good hair for one. Um, if they do have really quite lovely hair, they probably don't want it cut, and they probably don't want it coloured. In you're lots not of things actually allowed to. to. Did you know that? Well, you're not allowed to cut or colour a model's hair. Well, you'd have to have the, you'd have agency. to have permission of the agency, yeah. isn't it, to do it? So then you're looking at a Pacific model, aren't you, to actually I mean, do that? I mean, essentially with Fashion Week as well, they're going from show to show, so it wouldn't really work. With it, it. It, you wouldn't have the time, no. um, and it won't work at all. But yeah, a lot of hairdressers will actually use wigs. Um, a lot of very famous hairdressers have actually won some of the biggest hairdressing competitions mm. in the world that we have and in the UK, and they won those by actually using a wig yeah. on the actual model. So it's not unheard of. Um, and I think wigs are a great thing to actually do. Yeah. Um, we also, you know, when we talk to our customers and the end user, like people yourself tuning in tonight on Facebook and on Instagram, a lot of them, um, people wear a wig because it's a necessity and they have to wear a wig for different reasons but we also sell an awful lot of wigs to a lot of people who just want to actually create a different look yeah they're going out for the weekend they're going somewhere different and they look at buying a wig as if they would buy a new pair of shoes or a new handbag or an outfit to go out for an evening it can be another accessory for people as well to actually look at so there's lots of reasons yeah definitely when it comes to fashion really Bradley isn't it and that's why we've got collections like our high fashion collection Mm -hmm. which is really kind of focused on fashion styles and wigs and it has a quick turnover and a quick change in a style yeah um so going back to this particular one then Bradley for Celine let's talk about Celine right so Celine is a French brand okay um, I believe predominantly centered around Paris. Uh-huh. Yeah, beautiful. Which, beautiful city. I remember when I went last year, you actually recommended me a list of food I had to have. I did. And you did, did you have I, it? I did. I had a tick list and I did it. Good. Uh, and they're all the best time. food you can have in Paris. Absolutely. Wonderful. In a proper little bistro. Absolutely. Yeah, oh, I've been to Paris for a long time. Well, you're going to feel inspired again. to go after this conversation, Yeah, sure. yeah. <laughs> if only we could travel. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Yeah, one for the tick list for next year again, isn't it? Yeah. A weekend in Paris. Well, Celine's whole uh, catwalk show this year was focused on the late 60s, early 70s. Oh, Which publicity. is why you've got that kind of loose wave coming through. Yep. We've had a real oh, 70s revival, you know, in the last few years. That's yep. been coming through. So it makes Shit. sense now that you've seen it. It does completely, man. Yeah. Takes me back to when I was a teenager. There you go. Yeah. So everything that was shown on this catwalk show was all about essentials very simplistic things that they weren't overdone. You had great pieces of denim, denim bootcut jeans. Lovely. You know, a bit of fringe, that kind of thing going on. Yeah. And the idea behind it is to highlight how at that time in, in culture, Parisian girls were seen as the envy of the whole world. Or are they still not there, Bradley? I think so. You know, they, I think so. I think it's just the way they hold themselves. They're just beautiful, aren't they? They are, but it's it's the effortlessly it, cool thing. Yeah, again. it just comes from within, doesn't it? One hundred percent. Yeah, definitely. So with that, this is what we want you to create. We want those effortless waves. Okay. But they probably do take a little bit of effort. A little bit. Of just effort. a little bit. So I want to know how you do that. How I've done this. Yeah. Okay. Um, again, I'm working on a human hair wig. Okay. This is the amber from our gem collection. Mm-hmm. and it's about 14 inches in hair length so it gives you that really nice just past the shorter kind of hair length you can do the same look with the diamond as well if you wanted it to be longer which is 18 inches in length with this particular wig it's human hair again so i washed it and conditioned it and then what i done i actually just scrunched some mousse through into the actual hair just to actually give the hair a little bit of texture and I combed it away from the face in the position and I put a parting into it 
in the area I wanted the part in to actually be, as you can see, and I, I always get confused when I have two cameras. <laughs> so I put my part in, as you can see, I've taken the hair up slightly away from the face because I didn't want it just dragging down over the face. I wanted to give it a little bit of lift. And I literally done that, scrunched the mousse in, and I just left it to dry overnight. Right. So really simple, very, very easy so to do. So how did you get that texture with so it? So very easy to do. When you look at our gem collection, when they come straight out of the box, they've just got this lovely movement to it because it's actually been kind of styled and packaged at the factory. Okay. But when you wash it, they will have this lovely little bit of movement to it. So as long as you actually just carefully scrunch some mousse into that, leave it to dry, comb it through gently, leave it to dry on its own, you're gonna get that really nice tousled look that we've got for the sling look that Bradley wanted us to do. If you feel you're not able to do that so easily, or you don't wanna be washing it, you could actually plait your hair put it into loose plaits overnight, several of them all over the head, take them out the next day, and then you're gonna get that nice kinky effect to it as well. So all I'm gonna do now, because I just wanna soften out this hair where the wax was, all that mousse, sorry, that I put into it. And just with my hands, and just the warmth of my hands, will just stop to actually break up that curl for me. So again, it's just one of those really easy looks to do. Um, you could plait it when it's wet and that would actually give you a little stronger curl to it if that's what you actually were looking for. So as you can see, it's just working my way through that. We're just getting that nice, soft look. And you're going to want to get it bigger. In the picture, the hair was a lot bigger. This is still a little bit flat for me, really. So I want to actually achieve and get that slightly bigger. Let me just show you the hair at the back. So you've got that really nice little soft wave to it, which is lovely. And it will just do that and uh, that will do it just naturally so anybody wearing the amber the diamond if they leave it to dry naturally they will get that look wow and that's just a really easy look to achieve what i want to do though i want to just actually give a little bit of body to it give it a little bit more texture okay because i feel looking at the image that bradley's presented me um that our model has got some product in her hair and it's probably got a little bit more texture to it as well so i'm going to use a product that i actually really love and it's what we actually call sea salt spray and what you actually do you just actually just squirt it and spray it into the hair as you actually just whiz a hair dryer through it the hair dryer is always on a cool temperature okay. um, so you're not you know actually blow drying it as such but it's just so you can actually move that hair around with the spray. So just bear with me once we make a little bit of noise. Um, and you can probably see Just by adding a little bit of sea salt spray, we've added a little bit more texture to the actual hair to get that look that the actual model was actually wearing. So I think it's quite important again just to actually, and it gives it a little bit more of a everyday worn kind of look to yeah. it once you've actually put that texture 
through the actual hair. So that for anybody wearing human hair is really easy to achieve. I would also say for any of you, if you're wearing a synthetic wig as well, if you've got a wig that's got a little bit of movement to it, a little bit of natural movement, again, you will be able to create that kind of look as well, mm -hmm. just by putting some product onto it. So don't think it is just for a human hair wig that you can actually do this. And again, if you put the right accessories with it, you're wearing your big sunglasses, you've got that real 70s look going on, you can really achieve that look that you actually want. So would you say we got the hair right, Bradley? I would say we got it nailed down once again. And that's just, it was just so easy. So a lot of it really does come down to the product, doesn't it? It comes down to the product that you're using. Yeah. Because a lot of, I would say, the hair behind the scenes on these, there's probably not a lot that can be done to it. It's the natural hair they're working with because yeah. it's a time scale. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, I mean, on a catwalk, when you're actually looking at that look, that's obviously the model's own hair. You yeah. can see that quite easily. Um, she probably just came straight in from getting out of bed, really. <laughs> Long hair, she probably had it tied up in bed, scrunched up and then come in. It's not a lot of effort yeah. to achieve that look. They would have taken probably quite a long time to achieve that mm -hmm. look. Um, but it is. And you can almost see, because it's quite fly away the hair as well on those, on that image, you can see it's quite fly away, just like our hair is actually on this one. But that's the kind of look they wanted. And easy to actually create yourself. And I think a lot of people who are out there probably wearing the diamond, wearing the amber, don't actually realise the amount of kind of movement and kind of curl you can actually achieve with it with very little kind of fuss. Yeah, I mean, I would really say easy. generally if you get something that looks a certain way when it comes out of the box, you you're going to try and stay. make it look like that every yeah. day, aren't you? Yeah. And I know a lot of people just like to wear their hair straight. They use their straightening arms on it just to actually straighten that hair. But if you wanted something that was really easy, and for those of you who maybe are wearing a diamond or an amber and you wanted a slightly easier look, something a little less maintenance, for, you know, then using this, it's going to be a lot easier. Mm -hmm. You can leave your hair and also the less work you're doing to any of the human hair wigs, they will last that little bit longer for you Yeah, as well because you're not putting so much strain on the actual hair. So from that one, you wanted to move on to the... Anna Sui. Anna Sui. Anna Sui, yeah. I keep calling her Anna Sui. So do I. So Anna, but is it Anna Sui or Anna Sui? I've looked it up, it's actually Anna Sui. Anna Sui. It is indeed. Because we were calling her Anna Sui. I know, really, I've been doing it, it wrong for a long time, I think. So, <laughs> so you've been teaching me the wrong pronunciations. I, I'm very sorry, I have. That's okay. So <laughs> with Anna Sui, Sui? Yeah. We're going again using the same wig so taking this look so you've been out all day um now you've had a phone call and you're going out for the evening and you want to dress up a little bit more for the evening or maybe you're going out for a nice lunch you've just come off the beach and you want to be a little bit more dressy so looking at the anna sui we've basically taken that top section of hair and we're twisting it around just rolling the hair around, a couple of pins, just to give you a little bit more of a kafirid look to it, really. Yeah. Um, and have you got any comments you'd like to make with yeah, this so one, Bradley? What was your thoughts on this one? Well, with the last two, both of those catwalk shows were all about really making women more powerful and yeah. having that kind of boss sort of energy, I guess, is what you'd say, you know with those looks. Anna Sui went for not the opposite of that, because I think there's definitely power in being more delicate. There's nothing wrong with that. Oh, I think it's nice, yeah. You know, absolutely nothing wrong with that at yeah, all. Yeah, that nice feminine soft. She's really gone with that that element of um, femininity in the softness. Which softness is lovely. Side. It is lovely. And she has really taken like a boho, loose waves, which works well moving on from the style that we just did for Celine. But her reference point for her catwalk was um, actually an artist called Mobili. Okay. 
Um, right. She saw women as being very soft, almost like cotton candy. She would paint them very beautifully with lots of flowing lines and shapes. And the hair was always very dreamlike and flowing as well. Okay, so like kind head. of chiffony in yeah. silky flowing fabrics. Absolutely. So it's very, very much like springtime, which works well with the clothing. Yes. So what better thing to do than to have this kind of hair in spring, at the festivals in the summer, all that kind of thing. Yeah, I think put that some will flowers really in your through. hair. And yeah, so this is a look that you're going to really see coming in yeah. spring, summer, this coming year, isn't it, I really? I think braids and doing your hair in different ways on top of the head has been a big thing for the last few years. So it has. Every yeah. time something slightly different. So it's not it's hit. not changing, is it really? It's, it's just evolving. A, it's evolving. Yeah. yeah. It's giving a different look, isn't it, really? Yeah. Um, all I've done with this one, as you could see when Mitz Bradley and myself were talking and discussing this look by Anna Sui. Sui? Sui. Anna Sui. Anna Sui is I've taken literally the top section of the actual hair just all the way around if you can actually see so i've just taken that top section out and i'm just lifting it all up with my fingers i want to keep it quite loose i still don't want it to be too structured because it's not going to be look going with the look that we actually want to achieve but i want to actually achieve that height as well so instead of having the hair going back towards the crown i'm trying to bring it forward mm -hmm. slightly so we're bringing more of that hair forward and um, up at the sides and i'm just working that through with my fingers so it's keeping it quite loose all the time as i'm working and once i've got it to that stage i'm then just going to twist that hair so as you can see, I'm just twisting the hair as I go. And then it will just twist back on itself. And you can see that's beginning to kind of twist in not around. The longer ends, I'm just going to pin under with a little pin. So just take a little grip and pin that hair into place. And you probably only need a couple of little grips to hold it in place for yourself. Just to make that really secure because you don't want it to actually unravel on yourself as you sat down for lunch or out dancing in the evening. And again, you've got that very soft little twist on the top and you've still got that lovely tousled hair at the actual back and there's the Anna Sui so picture. Again, it's quite simple isn't it? It's really easy to do, it's a look I think anybody even with limited experience you don't need to be a hairdresser to create any of these looks. And they're quite really? wearable on the everyday it's as well. Wearable they? every day. I mean, that's the kind of thing you could actually wear to work if you were getting quite hot at work. Your hair was hanging all over your face. Mm -hmm. You could quickly just twist it up and stick a pin through it. Yeah. It's quite simple. Um, again, you could accessorize this. You could put little flowers through it if you wanted to. You could actually put little beads on it as well. There's something it's about it, Jane, that's almost a little bit Japanese looking. Yes, with that little top knot, isn't yeah. it? But I think the crucial thing is is to actually get that lift mm. and to actually lift it up so it's not too flat when you're doing it. I mean, the little ends, if you wanted, you could actually spike those out a little bit as well. So you can actually create quite funky little looks to it. So to get that lift, Jane, would it be the products that were in there from the previous look? Would that have helped with this? That would have actually helped ever so slightly, but I think because there's enough hair there, that you actually take from that top section you've got enough to actually create that lift that you actually want which is lovely we've just had a yeah. comment from nails and diamonds i was just thinking the same add some she put chipsticks through yeah. to look stunning but then corrected to chopsticks chopstick, chip i want salt and vinegar chipsticks <laughs> i'm going to get some on the way home i do like those oh, my they're favorite. great 
<laughs> yeah, I like the little ones from Sainsbury's. Yes. A pound packet oh, or something. Little, the little skinny ones. It's party season. Why yeah. not get the crisps out? Well, That's it. No excuse you needed. You can have crisps any time. <laughs> and I'm just going to show you the back of that one. That's beautiful. So you can Jane. see what that looks like all the way around. So again, party hair. Next summer is that kind of hair you'll see on the beach. Out in the park, isn't it? It's just very Anywhere. casual. And it's just a really so easy to achieve. So both of those looks that we've actually done mm -hmm. have been really, really simple and easily achievable, I think, by anybody with any kind of skill basis. Yeah. Really. And which one are we moving on to now? Well, the next one we're moving on to is um, by the designer Stacey Bendit. And she has a uh, collection called Alice and Olivia, which is quite funny because that's my two cousins' names. Oh, just, is it? <laughs> so I saw that the other day and thought, hmm, interesting. But her whole theme was, again, the more delicate, dreamlike, very girl-like, you know, young girl yeah. kind of um, state of, of mind, I think. And her whole catwalk was based on things being very floral, very spring-like. So really, Dream with like. all with all these catwalks, then we're looking at something. Everybody's going for this very soft, very feminine. So you think next year, like you know, spring summer, we're mm. going to get into a lot more flowing dresses. Well, it's quite and just dreamlike, softer isn't it? lines, isn't it? Maybe really? because we've been stuck inside all year. Maybe yeah. that's coming through. You know, absolutely. But these were very much like mythological, kind of like nymph. Yep, very nymph-like nymph creatures, creatures with a lot of French braids, um, and again, very loose. So. Okay. I set you so, the task of this look. That was the look Bradley asked me to actually achieve. So yeah, a French braid and then some lovely um, little embellishments. This girl, she's got all different pearls in her hair, which I think look really nice. Um, we actually went and actually used little diamantes in our model. And I just... Which side should we start with? Doesn't matter. There we go. So I've actually done a nice little braid. We've chosen a colour of hair that is a really vibrant, mm. burnt orange almost. Yeah. Which we thought was absolutely lovely to actually just complement the style. And then we've actually taken these little diamantes that you can just twist into the hair. They don't clip in at all. They just twist into the actual hair and then twist back out again. And I think for somebody who's wearing quite long hair, they want to achieve a completely different look with their hair. Mm -hmm. Again, this can actually be done. So yeah. And you can do that, you wouldn't have to have human hair. You wouldn't have to have, no, you? you can have synthetic. This is synthetic, this Oh, piece. that is synthetic. Yeah, um, well this is actually one of our pieces. It's um, a bespoke product, it's our cyber hair. So we do a bespoke product called Cyber Hair and V Hair, which is like your equivalent to our own grown human hair. Um, and this was a particular wig that we made oh, a while ago in this colour. And because I wanted the length to be able to achieve this braid on it, mm -hmm. that's why I chose this particular one. But I just love the colour as well. Yeah. I do like nice, bright, fresh colours. And I thought that worked particularly well for this little task that Bradley set well, me up. You've aced this one. You've even gone all out and put the diamantes on I there have, too. Yeah, <laughs> so I have, yeah, kind of, you know. You took the brief and you went for it. Yeah, well done. I thought I'll do that one. That was one I'd done in advance. Again, it didn't take any length of time, really. Probably 10, 50, 10 minutes, probably tops. Mm -hmm. Just two quick braids and stuck a few diamantes in. Um, so if you've got a friend who's good at doing braids for you, French braids, get them onto your wigs. Again, try to get a lace front because then you can take it away from your front and it's going to actually look a lot more natural. Yeah. So you think we duck crack that one then? Absolutely. Good. I'm doing quite well this evening so far. Well, Jane, you've got to connect four at this point. You've done four in a row that you've passed. Have we done four? You've yes, done we four have already. done four. Well, I think we're about halfway through, actually. So... Wow. Should we... Okay. Tell the guys about the competition. 
I think we should. I think we should. Most definitely. So, tonight, for those of you that are watching, we're actually going to do a piece live from start to finish at the end of the show tonight. Yeah. And whoever can answer this correctly, a few of you might get it. It's not rocket science. It's not a hard one. We've really. actually shown you the answer already. Yeah, we've talked about the answer. We have. We've shown it to you. But no so. more clues. It stops there. Okay. So, whoever can get this right, if a few of you do, your name will be drawn out at the end at random. But you'll actually get to have the final piece sent to you for charge to keep. Wow. The piece that Jane prepares will be catwalk hair sent to your door. Go on, and whoever does actually win the competition, it would be really great if you could actually send us the picture of yes, you wearing it. we would love to see um, that. Obviously, we won't put it on any social media unless you actually gave Bradley the permission to actually do anything like that. But it yeah. would be really great to actually see... Um, a picture of you in it, um, yeah. whoever that lucky winner might be, isn't it? Exactly. Um, Bradley's also going to be announcing, when are you going to announce, it? we've got the... Um, we've got the winner of our Noriko competition, but we will be announcing later on tonight. Yeah, well. we're going to do that later on as well. well. So, yeah. So, yeah. a new competition. Mm-hmm. Um, are you going to tell them the question? I think that might help, mightn't it? Shall yeah, I was that? just thinking if we said the question. And <laughs> right. Yes. Um, yeah, so, you can tell us the question, Bradley. The question is, one of our designers tonight features a Greek god within their logo. If you can tell us which designer it is and the god within that logo, just pop it in the comments section. You're in a chance to win. Yeah. So we need the name of the brand and the god in the logo. Okay, and we've already spoken we've about already this spoken tonight, haven't we? Yeah. So the clue's already there for you because we have spoken about it. Makes it a little bit easier. Um, Do you want to reintroduce us, Jane? All the wigs are actually still all visual, so you might be able to use those as a reminder yeah. as well. And I will just reintroduce ourselves. Um, for anybody who's actually just tuned in to actually watch us. Um, hello and welcome. I'm Jane Kelly and I'm at Adran's UK Live and I'm with Bradley this evening. Any questions or comments, please just pop it into the comments box and we'll actually answer any of your questions as we go through this evening as well. Tonight we're actually looking at something completely different to what we normally do. This is our last session of the year for Facebook and Instagram. Um, and then we're going to have a break for Christmas and New Year and be back in January. We will indeed. Um, Bradley will let you know and you'll see lots of adverts going out as to what we'll be doing in January for all of you. So we wanted to do something a little bit different tonight. So Bradley kind of almost, well he did, not almost, he did set me a task in a way. Um, he came down and actually gave me a set of photographs to actually look at and asked me to recreate the looks of lots of different images and photographs that we actually have. So images like this one from oh, Celine and Anna Sui. Yay, we've got it right. <laughs> Not Anna Sui, Anna Sui. And Alicia and Olivia. Alice and Olivia. Alice yeah. and Olivia, which I love that one actually. I think that's got to be one of my favourites. Yeah. And then of course um, Versace, which is obviously very very classic looks. So he's given me a huge, well not a huge, but he's given me a nice selection of different looks to see if I can actually achieve them. All the looks that we've done so far have all been done on human hair wigs, on our diamond and on our amber and there have been looks that you can achieve really quite easily yourself at home mm -hmm. without having to actually go to a hairdresser's or to take too much time over it and you don't need to have a huge amount of skill as well a lot of it is in the products that we actually look at and the products that we're actually using um, so that's what we've been doing this evening so far we've done four different looks already and we're going to actually move on to our next look, which is, how do you pronounce it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to and this off. is why Bradley is actually doing a lot of the talking this evening, um, because he's got to learn, and I didn't want to pronounce all these names. 
it's not been an easy evening trying to learn all of them. So I'm going to give this my best shot. Okay, just listen for the accent. So it's Giada Montepollioni. And say that again. Giada Montanapollioni. Fantastic. It makes you want to go to Italy, actually. <laughs> <laughs> or have a cornetto. <laughs> that, well, it sounds quite delicious. It that, does sound but really do you know lovely. The Montana Polione mm. is Europe's most expensive street. Okay. So it's a, a shopping street in Milan. Oh, okay. Had the very, very lucky opportunity to go there last year. And did All you buy of, anything? I didn't. I, w I tell you what I did do, though. I went to the uh, original Prada store, which oh, has been there since 19... 15, something like that. Oh, Beautiful fabulous. old building. Was it all Art Deco? Oh, it looked like you were the Titanic or something. It was stunning. Amazing. And I bought something in there. But we won't talk prices because that's tacky. Seems <laughs> tacky, yeah. <laughs> so, oh. this particular designer, they're very different from a lot of the other classic Italian fashion brands that we see, which are very, very luxurious and, and, and arguably quite over the top sometimes, but I like that, it's creativity, you know? So Giada actually focuses on minimalism, modernity, that everything is very, very sharp, sharp, simple. straight lines, simple edges, quite monochrome sometimes as well. Okay. Um, just simplistic with a lot of geometric shape influence. Which is why I thought this next next piece was really, really interesting in terms of hair. And it's a real challenge for you. So it is a challenge. They're actually one. potentially getting harder as we go through this. I think they are actually, Bradley. I think we started very simple and now we're getting a little <laughs> bit more, yeah, more difficult. So this is the look that Bradley's trying or has asked me to actually achieve this evening. And it's quite interesting um, when you look at the back of that. And this is all to do with the back of the hair. So from the front, you would actually just see that beautiful face. But at the back, it's all to do with how sleek that actual hair is, which it looks beautifully shiny and sleek. But it's so simple, this little, and it is really a very small knot that they've actually done, but so simple. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes it's those simple looks that are actually harder to create yeah and they take a lot more time sometimes and a little bit more skill i think doing this on your own hair would probably be a little bit trickier for you to do um but i know some of you out there are very very skilled with your hair and take a lot of time and practice again i'm actually working on the gem collection and i'm working on the diamond mm -hmm for the wig that we've actually selected. I've actually blow dried the hair slightly away from the face, um, only to make my styling a little bit easier because we're all focused on the back of the hair, not on the front of the hair. And to create this look, what I've actually done or what I'm going to do is just to take a small section of hair through the actual front because hair is quite weighty you don't want to take too much hair because it's going to be quite heavy and that knot might possibly slide out so have you done anything with the products have you done any prep work before you've done this all i've done was actually blow dried it just, blow dried just it. to actually get that little bit of lift mm -hmm. And I've not put any product in it yet. I don't want the hair to be too heavily laden down with product. Okay. I think I'm going to need to put a little bit of product through just to actually keep that hair a little bit more together so it doesn't fly away too much. So all I'm going to actually do to do that, I've decided kind of what size section I want to actually take. So because I've chosen that section at the front, Again, I'm just going to actually use a little bit of serum, which I'm going to just rub through my hands. And all that is going to do, because I don't want to overload the hair with product, it's just going to actually make it slightly heavier, really. And I'm just keeping that hair really sleek and down. So I'll just 
twist that slightly so I know what hair I'm dealing with. And I'm going to do exactly the same on the actual other side as well. So nothing different. Again, just a little bit of product that I'm just going to work through my hands and just smooth through that hair. So exactly the same on the side that I actually showed you. And Bradley's going to guide me just in case you can't see what I'm doing. I'm then with that hair because it's all about being quite neat. You can see I've got my two sections of hair, one on either side, and I think you can see yeah. that quite well. Yep. I'm then what I'm going to do is literally tie a knot. So I'm just taking the hair over and down to create a very, very simple knot. And I'm just going to actually take it back in on itself. Trying to bring all that hair through so it stays quite tidy. Then just securing it with my fingers there to keep it in place. Again, I'll just take a pin because I want to secure that knot so it's not going to unravel on itself. And you're going to be able to see, I mean, this is fairly easy to do. I think to do it on your own hair, it might be a little bit more complicated. And again, there we go, Bradley. Okay. Find our picture. It's just see, showing off now. Let's see if we've done it. <laughs> you've done it. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. I'm pleased. So, I'm a little bit speechless at how easy you made that look after I took so long to try and work out how to pronounce that word for you. <laughs> yes, say it again. So, Giada Montana Paglioni. Yeah, but, I mean, for, I think a catwalk look is beautiful, but yeah. I think for that look and just that glamour look, if you were going to a friend's wedding, mm -hmm. you were going somewhere in the spring and you wanted that really just understated but really nice glamorous look then you can get that quite easily it's getting a lot really. of blood parts and this one, uh, really yeah. and you could get a hairdresser to do it for you if you couldn't do it yourself again if you are wearing a wig you could always just block it up like i have do all the work beforehand and then just carefully pop it on and you've got all your work and we've got hi sally thank you for joining us <laughs> He's probably sat in bed, <laughs> normal, but that's just simple. I think anybody, if you've got long hair, it's just a simple look, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it's beautiful though, Jane, it really is. It's, it's very simple, but... And I think I think simplicity is it, really, Bradley. That's it, isn't it? I think that yeah. is the whole premise behind that Her look. brand. Yeah. You know, it is the minimalism yeah. again. So, yeah, well done. Simple. Oh, should we nice move on to easy. the next one? So everybody's going to be wanting me to do their hair like that. They are, right? I think they like, are. Can you do my hair? It could be a twist. <laughs> but yeah, we've got a few girls with long hair as well, so it would actually be quite good. I just had a comment that it almost looks like a little bow. It does, actually. Yeah, it almost it is. It's just almost like a little figure of eight, really, going on in there. But yeah, you want to bring it a little oh, bit closer. Oh, we don't need to. Have to well, you can oh. the guys on Facebook might want to see that. Yeah. There we go. So just very, very effective. Simple, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's lovely. Should we move on to our next one? And we'll move on to our next one. The next one I'm going to throw you away is quite a nice natural progression on from this one. I isn't think. it? Yes. So, so we're looking at Brandon Maxwell. Brandon Maxwell. So this is our next picture that we're going to actually be achieving this evening. Um, again, you can see it's all very sleek, isn't it, Bradley? What um, this designer is actually trying to achieve. 
So again, a lot of it is in the product that we're actually using yeah. as well. Um, I'm going to take this one down now because I'm going to use, which is a shame really, um, but I'm going to use the same wig for this look. So all we do is just untie our knot. Great. It's simple. Um, well, Brandon Maxwell is quite famous for evening props. That tends to be the kind of thing that's usually gone for. Oh, so, right, so it's like red carpet, really? Yeah, very yeah. much red carpet, but through a curveball this year and when a bit more ready to wear every day. Okay, so a bit more accessible to the high street. Absolutely, but kept an element of that glossy kind of catwalk vibe at the same time. So there is, as you said, that sleek finish. But there was a lot of hair that's accessorised with chiffon bows, chiffon scarves, that kind of thing. And I think that brings it into the everyday. And it does because it's something we've all got in our wardrobe. And again, going back to the other designers you've looked at this evening mm. and we've actually talked about, and you've been talking about like the um, floaty, like the chiffons and the silks and yeah. the actual floaty fabrics in hair. It all actually plays into the same thing then, really. It does. There's so a, a lot, lot of, of these designers really for 21, spring, summer 21, they're looking at those same kind of actual looks, isn't it's it, really? Very, it's very free, isn't it? Very it dream-like, very yeah. and, which is probably directly because you've been stuck inside all, all year. Yeah, and we want to have that little bit of freedom, freedom. isn't it? <laughs> Definitely. I think probably um, if people want us to, we could always do, or Bradley and myself could always do a couple of videos so you can actually, and we can put them up on our site and then you can see how to create these looks by just re-watching the videos. Because I think sometimes I, it's quite okay for me to stand here and do it, but you need to actually re-watch that sometimes, isn't it? Yeah. Again, I'm just putting a little bit of product through my hands because I want to keep this hair, I don't want to overload it with product because then it's going to look as if it's greasy and it needs to actually be washed again. But I just want to create that lovely sheen to it that I think, as you can see, that hair looks just absolutely beautiful. And this look is something that you can do really, really quite easily. It's a look that um, lots of mums out there can probably do. Probably lots of mums do it on their girls for when they're going to school, um, minus the chiffon bow, of course. Depends how fancy you're feeling, Jane. <laughs> um, I would say it's a look that I've created, done over the years for definitely my daughter, yeah. niece, putting their hair up out of the way because it's just easy mm. and looks tidy. I'm just getting rid of some of that product on my hands. And I'm just going to take that hair back. Again, I'm keeping this really really simple i'm not scraping it back from the face too much so i'm just taking it into the nape but i'm lifting it up ever so slightly because i don't want it to be just too flat in that nape area bradley i want to no. have a little bit of lift Okay, so that's what I'm doing. So I'm essentially, I'm getting that hair mm -hmm. into a ponytail. And I think everybody can actually see what we've actually done there. Again, though, you've got the lift in the top, Jane. It's not scraped It's back. not scraped back, because I think there's nothing worse when you've got that really scraped back look. Mm -hmm. So again, when I prep that, and when I blow dried it, I would have actually blow dried it going up with that lift to get that lift back, putting a little bit of mousse into the hair so I could have that little bit of body going into the hair. So I've got the ponytail. I'm then going to tie that off with a band. And that point, I'm going to actually take my chiffon scarf as well, which I'm going to actually thread through that band because that's going to actually secure it for 
you when you're actually wearing it. I'm, I think I'll just give it another pull with my ponytail, see if I can get the hair to go through one more time. Probably not, I think it's too tight. So loosen off, your, you've got your chiffon scarf, you've got your hair tied into a ponytail. Two steps, yeah. Third step, separate your ponytail from your chiffon scarf. Make a little gap or a little hole just above the band of the ponytail. Okay, so just in here. You can see my fingers sticking through yeah. at the bottom. Take your ponytail and pull it through. Tightening it up as you go. Get your brush just to smooth that ponytail down. And there we go. You can have your chiffon scarf longer. You can have it shorter if you wanted to tie that into a bow. You could tie it into a bow. Um, and again, you've got your look that you actually wanted. That's it. That's it, nice and simple. Yeah, I mean, you can tie that up a little bit more. Go. So again, I think it just comes in with the, uh, just the accessorizing. And just the accessorizing, right, yeah. It? So again, just the shape is, is you've got the shape exactly there. That. Yeah, or chiffon scarf's quite large. I think we could double a smaller think, chiffon scarf. I think so. Um, but Generally, I think you've actually got the look, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. That you actually wanted. And that scarf's not going to blow away because it's actually tied in with your own ponytail as well. Well done. So. Another one, you've done. Another one. So, I think the, the last one we've got, this is your live demo. So, maybe I'll catch you out with this one. Probably. Because you've, you've blown us away with the rest of them. Possibly you might. Um, so the last one's quite an interesting one, Jane. Yeah, because we're... So the last designer we're looking at tonight is Amano Medina. And this catwalk show was a nod to classic Italian style. Okay. And when I say classic, I mean we're throwing back now as far as the okay. early parts of the last century. Yes. Okay. So think Let film me. stars, think jazz. And then... Completely contrast Think that. Gatsby. Yeah. Contrast that with tropical summer prints. Yeah. Oh, you can see that, can't you? With the, the pop, almost pop art colour that's yeah. been put through the hair. Yeah, lovely. You can imagine pineapples, can't you? Absolutely. Sitting on the beach with a nice cocktail. Yeah. Really. <laughs> you can see we're all getting desperate. Well, this is it. We've got us out. Get us out. Yeah. But so, yeah, no, you can see that look completely. So even how would though you do that? it's actually quite, a, even though it's actually, it looks quite a harsh look, mm. it's still very feminine. Well, you actually told me, didn't you, that the, the finger waves, finger waves was a way to soften, originally created to soften the harsh bob. Yes, it of was. The 1920s. Yeah, from the 1920s. And that's what we had the finger waves and then Marcel waving mm -hmm. as well. And I think, you know, most classic hairdressers learn how to finger wave back in the day the wig we're using for this um, we've done no prep on this one at all um, the others we've done a little bit of prep on um, because we didn't want to be blow drying live but this one we've done no prep on at all the wig we're actually using is the iris and it's the iris out of the sensu lotus collection and it's in a color l4 stroke 33 which um, I think from my memory is red chestnut, if we're actually looking okay. at the colour. I'm just positioning the wig where I actually want it so it's nice and secure when I'm working. And the competition we're running tonight, and Bradley can actually just go through the competition again mm. with you whilst I'm doing this, because this is the wig that one lucky viewer this evening will be able to actually have 
dropping in on their doorstep yeah. sometime this week or early part of next week. Um, we will actually send it to you so it's actually still on this poly head. So it's not going to be out of shape at all and we'll package it very, very carefully for you yeah. as well. Um, whoever does win, if they wanted to send us an image with you with it on, that would be brilliant, That'd really. Be great. It'd be nice it, to see where it ends up. It would be nice to see where it ends up and see if it, you know, gets taken out for an evening and it has yeah. an evening out. It might be one that you want to actually wear Christmas Day with a really nice dress on. You could actually kind of um, rock your like 1920s style, really, go quite Gatsby with your actual clothes, you know, very Titanic y. Um, the clothes in that era was just beautiful. Yeah anyway and there's quite a lot of kind of clothes around like that now with those very soft floaty chiffon blouses as well Absolutely. it would work really well with it yeah so should i give the question again you give the question bradley okay Let's try stop so tonight we've been through oh about nine or ten designers i think in total quite a few yeah quite and it was a it was a real task today really that you gave me good keep you on your toes jane Somebody needs to. <laughs> so the question for you to answer tonight. Out of the designers that we have discussed tonight, there is one which uses a god within their logo. We need to know the name of that designer and the name of the god within that logo. If you can give us both of those, we will enter you into a draw. Pick your name out and you're in, a chance, in with a chance to win this piece. No clues, Jane. You love to give away clues. Yeah, I, I do, see, actually. Your I'm thinking, lip is trembling right now. Yeah, I'm thinking, oh, what? <laughs> and I did, I'm not very good at You're trying to show off that you know the answer. That's what it is. It's written down in front of me as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so we've had a, a comment here. I've tried on the iris. I like it. It's lovely, isn't it? Yeah. Well, this is the one you can win. I think so. that it's just got that really nice soft wave to it. I've just gone in and sprayed some actual um, wax blast into it. So I've, I've just sprayed some wax into it. But I think without product in, in it, it is absolutely a beautiful wig. I've just put a little bit of product into it because I wanted to make it a little bit more pliable for me to work with and obviously to put those waves into it for you as well. I'm going to actually put a little bit of God, that was strong. It's all down my throat now. I thought it might go that way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gosh, it's gone all down yours as well. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> so normally I don't kind of overload the hair with too much product, but for this kind of look, you are going to need to get a lot of product into it. What's quite interesting though, putting product into this, and for those ladies out there who do actually quite like wearing um, the iris. You can see what's happened by me just putting that little bit of wax blast through it. It's the product. It's actually really texturized those waves and curls as well. So even if you didn't want to put a finger wave into it, but you just wanted to enhance that curl in waves that the iris has actually got. And I think this is a really good way of doing it because it's just really brought all that curl and texture out in that hair so you can create yourself a completely different look with it as well yeah so anybody wearing the iris or thinking of getting the iris you can create different looks with that completely and bradley sat all an in anticipation now thinking is I she am. gonna be able to do this one i mean it's quite an interesting look because when we look at the, the catwalk itself they seem to use whereas we're going to use hair products it looks to me like they've used some kind of paint i think on that picture it's kind of a they've got kind of her hair's probably quite a pinky color anyway but they've put a lot of wax through that it's right. very wet look isn't it, it? Is. yeah so it's making it look as if that hair And as you can see, I'm just smoothing that hair and then just pushing it forward. I'll turn you sideways so you can see what I'm doing because I want to actually create that wave. 
this hair is longer than the actual models in the actual image so it will look ever so slightly different Bradley okay um I have to say that because I'm going to get marked down otherwise <laughs> probably he's quite a taskmaster aren't you hey But, but I think when you're trying to interpret anybody's look, you're allowed to actually have your own slight take on that look as well. Absolutely. Because I think that's quite important to actually be quite individual with what you want to actually achieve with that look. Well, I think you'll say, you know, you see that coming through next year when you see variations of the styles we've shown tonight. Yeah. They're, they'll be shown in, in various different ways. They'll come through in ways you won't even realise until you think about it. And that's kind of the beauty of fashion, really. Absolutely, because the, the catwalk looks that you actually see, they're quite simple, but they're very high-end, aren't they? Yeah. And to achieve that every day in the high street isn't actually quite so easy, is it, no. really? So I think you have to adapt those looks to actually make them well more accessible to that everyday person, isn't it? Yeah. So as you can see, we're just putting a little wave through that hair. Can you see that wave coming through? I can, yeah. Just across there. So what's the key to get that? Is it the, the wax product? It's the wax product. I mean, you, when you do finger waves, normally you would put a lot of setting lotion, a lot of wax into it. Mm -hmm. You would also use a lot of actual little clips like this. And by clipping it into place, you will actually hold that little wave into place. And then you would move on to the next wave. And then with finger waves, you actually then go back in the opposite direction. So you get that kind of right. curl look like this. So again, I just want to put a bit of product through there. Want to try and tame this little bit of hair because this hair being longer tends to want to be a bit flicky. You can see it's wanting to flick out in different directions. <laughs> yeah, now that I'm seeing there. you do this, Jane, on a, on a longer style, I'm definitely noticing I've seen this quite a lot. And a lot of the other ones that I looked at for this. Oh, did what? This particular what? The finger waves? Yeah. It's quite a, yeah. It's a look, well, it, oh, I mean, it's test of time. It's been around for a long, long time. Um, God, I remember when I was an apprentice hairdresser, we used to actually do finger waves all the time. On a lot of clients, they would come in, you know, for their Friday shampoo and set, and it would all be finger waved or pin curled and I think probably a lot of hairdressers out there will actually remember those kind of looks yeah as you can see we're getting a nice wave coming through that section at the back just gonna take another little pin And again, let me work. I don't want to block the view of the camera. Again, just taking that wave. This, if you wanted finger waves done something like this, this is probably when you would need to go to a wig boutique salon to actually get your hair set and to actually get it done it's probably not 
quite as easy to achieve it home um, without having it done professionally for you. But once you've had your hair set or your wig set into this kind of look, it will actually last and it's not going to actually come out very easily. Right. So it's a look that you can achieve. Again, I think if you've got, you know, a party to go to, you've got a wedding to go to, and you just want that different look to go with your outfit, then this look would really work quite well. So you can see we're just putting that nice wave through there. You can definitely see the shape and texture being the it's, same. I think it's what it is, it's kind of, it is creating, and it's like when they call a wave, it is, it's like, the, the, it's very fluid, isn't it? When it you is. look at the waves on the sea, if you're walking along the seafront, they're very kind of round and very, very mm. fluid. And that's what we actually get when we're trying to achieve a look like this. I just want to... Shall I use? Trusty Elnet. Yeah, we all like a little bit of Elnet. Something else to make us cough in a minute, Bradley. <laughs> More fumes. <laughs> Not what I need this evening. But yeah, so really nice. You can see the light just catching that. And you can actually bring it out. You can make it as flat. As you want to as well so you can really flatten that down at the sides which I want to keep that wave there you can see what I'm doing to flatten it just taking it in yeah but putting my comb there just to actually keep that nice and flat because I want to take that in a so you genuinely are molding the hair aren't you with your hands when yeah. it comes to this yeah, putting that shape all through that hair. And what I've actually done, I've created it so we've got that movement or that wave. Mm -hmm. so, so it's <laughs> the, the Grinch nearly stole Christmas there. That would have been <laughs> Christmas trees broken. Now I'm taking that movement, so I want to have that same little wave going all the way around. Mm -hmm. So you can actually see I've created that wave that actually just sweeps through around. To the actual front and then curves back on itself. Amazing. Yeah. And it's all about just gently positioning that hair to where you envision, you know, that shape you're trying to create and that look that you actually want to actually create for your client or the style you're trying to achieve. So actually, in comparison to all the other ones we've looked at tonight, we've talked about how they will have been done because they were quick yeah, backstage. This, this would be one that would actually take a lot more. This would take a lot more work for somebody to actually do, take a lot more time for them to actually create that wave movement and the actual curl. Because you need to think, you know, which direction does that hair want to actually fall in? I think when you're working on human hair, it's a lot easier because mm. you can manipulate it to where it goes. With a wig, we're very much in the hands of how that wig's been made and where that hair wants to actually fall. So that's why I kind of started off being quite soft with it and just seeing where that wave movement actually took me to actually create those nice waves. And I think for something to take, you know, five minutes on a show and not trying to take too long over anything, yeah. we've created that nice 
soft wave coming through here, then just coming back on itself, slightly waved all the way through that back and nicely at the front as well. Just touching. something you just can't stop touching, isn't it? No, you've got to sculpt it. So it is very much like sculpture, yeah. isn't it? Really, um, trying to get that hair where you actually want it to go and where you want it to actually bend, and that's what it's about. And I think that's what hairdressing is about, really. It's designing as you actually go along, isn't it? Mm. But yeah, so you can actually create just a very soft finger wave. Yeah. Normally, if you've got more time, we would actually set that up. Yeah. And actually put all the pins in it to actually create more of a stronger wave. But I think for time restrictions, um, I actually think we're... We're fairly good, but yeah. we'll let Bradley be the judge of that. He's the um I think that's critic very, very this good. evening. It's very, very good, Jane. But I'm just I can see the shape coming through, but I, I think I understand more about the work that goes into that now. Finger and um, how you do it. Finger waving is a really traditional art form. Um, not everybody can do it, not everybody's been trained to do it. And I think those people who have done it over the years if they're, you know, back to doing pin curl, shampoo insets, finger waves, then it's kind of very classic hairdressing. Mm -hmm. And that's what we see a lot on the actual cabinet, really. Yeah. Those hairdressers trying to create. Um, right, well, Jane, I think what we should do is if we very quickly run through the styles that we've done tonight with the pictures, that um, we have remaining, because obviously a couple of them we've worked from one style into another. Yes. Um, whilst you're going through those, I'll look through our competition entries and I'll pick a winner. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, so should we take it from the top? Okay, so the first one we created this evening was the Versace look. So again, very, very classic, really nice um, look. So, and I've just got to bring her in a little bit. There we go. That's better, isn't it? That's much better. Yeah, can't see me, that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hidden behind the model. As you can see, very, very sleek hair. This was the actual image that Bradley gave me a couple of days. When did you give them to me, Bradley? I didn't think it was that long ago, was it? I like to keep you on your toes and make it as difficult as possible for you. <laughs> yeah, we didn't have a lot of prep time. So this is the image we were going for. Again, really, really sleek, but a little bit of lift on that hair, as you can see on the image. But again, all about those accessories as well that we've actually done. And we've actually got the actual Versace clip as well that we've actually popped in to the actual model's hair. So very classic, very easy to do. Again, a really nice look for, I think, going out for dinner. A really nice din you know restaurant that you might be going to or <coughs> a nice evening out with friends excuse me <coughs> the hairspray's got you in the end Jane <laughs> it did actually I think and then we actually moved on from there to the Celine which was our 1970s look wasn't it Bradley it so was, a revival yeah. of the actual 70s this I loved very very simple and again, we actually created that by using a human hair wig. Um, we have changed it into different styles since, but that's what it looked like all over. That was the texture of it. Yeah. And this was the texture, just very, very soft, very, very te um, textured, which was lovely. And this was a human hair wig that we just left, put some mousse in it and just left it to dry naturally. And then from the Celine, we actually went to the Anna Sui. Yeah. Well done. I'm getting there now. So we went to the Anna Sui. And this is the same look at the back and the sides, but we wanted a top knot put into it. 
so we're having a little bit more of an evening look it might be when you've come off the beach you go into a restaurant or you're actually going to a bar for a drink and you want that completely different look um, so we took it from the first look the Celine look into the Anna Sui look where we actually just twisted the hair around on itself and just popped a couple of pins into it just to actually secure the hair and from that look we went into the Alice and Olivier look so the really nice French braids that we actually done um, they've got little pearls in there little seed pearls and we put little diamantes in ours and I'll just show you what those actually look like so close up you can see how we actually copied that look which again is a really fun look it's a really nice easy look and I think moving into spring in summer 21 it's going to actually take off looks like this if you're gonna want to actually braid your hair if it's human hair wig or a synthetic wig I would always just try to get one with a lace front so you can actually braid it away from your face quite naturally so that was one of our other looks wasn't it Bradley it was. and then and you're gonna we had two looks with this one one when we actually just tied it into a knot so very very simply we tied it into a knot and I'll get Bradley to actually pronounce this designer's name which I, I when we done this first look I thought was absolutely beautiful yeah so simple but so beautiful really yeah and the designer's name Bradley the designer's name <laughs> is Giada Monta right hang on Montana Polioni beautiful there we go. I'm well practically done. from Italy now. You are actually. I've aced that word. That one word. That one word, yeah. It's really good. It sounds wonderful. <laughs> and then we actually moved on to Brandon Maxwell. Again, very simple, very chic look. And this was actually done, I think our little scoff, our ship on scoff was too large. Um, very, very simple ponytail. We showed you how to do that, incorporating your ship on scoff so it's not going to slip out and you're not going to actually lose it over the period of the evening or the day. So you can really dress that up or dress it down, depending on what you are actually doing in the evening. And then it was on to our last look, yeah, if I remember, was which was... Amano Scavino. Amano Scavino. A really stylized. I think it's quite classic actually. I think so. I think it's a lovely look and that's what we actually achieved a slightly longer version so probably a more wearable oh, a more wearable version because I think to actually wear your hair that short it takes quite striking features to be able to do yeah. that so ours is slightly longer but giving you that lovely soft wave all the way through the wigs that we've actually chosen yeah and do we have a competition winner bradley we do first of all i'm going to give you the winner of our noriko competition oh brilliant yeah because we had a noriko competition we going on did. wasn't it we did so this person will get messaged obviously as well just in case they're not watching tonight but the winner Hopefully of our competition i hope they are for the noriko was natty nunu seven natty nunu seven oh. i assume that's not your real name but that's your username. Probably so Natalie. Congratulations. You've oh, won brilliant. an Arico piece of your choice from the new collection. Oh, any colour and any style. I believe so. Brilliant. Believe Great so. prize to but actually win. We will win. contact Natty Nunu 7 privately. Yep. So she knows. Okay, Bradley um, will be in touch with you. So look out for your messages yeah. from him. And the winner of our competition tonight is actually. And they've been very, very, very active tonight. Well, all of our people watching. Everybody have, they? have yeah. They Did really we have, have lots of people like putting in the answers? We have, and do you know what? Mm. There wasn't anybody that got it wrong, which oh, has wow. made it really difficult. Well, that's really good because that means everybody was listening as well. Exactly. Or everybody's really into their fashion and everything as well, isn't I it? I think they are after tonight, Jane. Yeah. I think everyone's got a new insight. But I the... I, well, for me, it was a really interesting evening. 
It is interesting. Just to actually find out all the things Bradley found out to actually put together for this evening. I think the thing is, designers. with fashion, I think a lot of people go all clothes. You know. Yeah. But it's exactly like hair. It's that thought it's behind great, it, isn't yeah, it? It's the thought process. It's yeah. what gets you to that point. I think that's what's interesting. Which is what we do when we design our wigs and design our colours. There's always everything. something behind it all the time. Always. And yeah. there is with most things you do in life. Yeah, so. it's just that we don't always think about them. Exactly. So our winner, with that being said, the correct answer was Versace. And the god is Medusa. And our winner tonight is nails underscore and underscore diamonds x <laughs> oh brilliant that's the username don't know your full name I'm congratulations afraid, congratulations you have won the final wig that we worked on tonight brilliant thank you we'll get that out into the post for you yep you just drop um, us a direct message yes um and let us just obviously get in touch with you then we'll get your address and have that sent out to you yeah so send a message to our was that on Instagram or Facebook, Bradley? That one's actually come through Instagram. Okay, so um, yeah, just send a message through on Instagram to mm -hmm. Bradley, and he'll actually get back in touch with you just to actually find out all your postal details. Yeah. And congratulations for that. And if you are brave enough, um, and you do wear it, and I hope you will, just pop us a picture if you can, and it'd be really great if we can see a picture of you. Yeah, definitely. Um, it'd be nice to know what home it's actually gone to as well. So that'd be really really nice that's it isn't which it? is great that's yeah well, yeah and that's quite sad really it's our last one for the year isn't it's it it's a wrap for 2020 with yeah. the instagram and facebook live it seems a little bit strange to be saying that we've got another couple of weeks to go before christmas isn't it? but next week we're um tied up doing a webinar for different people next wednesday yeah. evening um so it's our trade customers uh, next week, trade customers it? next wednesday so tonight for everybody who's been watching us throughout the last probably six months or so, thank you for all of your support. And that's from both me and Bradley. We really appreciate your time that you take every Wednesday evening or most Wednesday evenings to actually watch us. It's been really great to have your support. And we will be back in the new year. We're going to have lots of new subjects and I'm sure Bradley would be busy thinking up new different kind of tasks for me to actually do, which should be quite interesting. Um, as we go through next year, me and Bradley have got some ideals that we'd quite like to do um, with regards to coming out, being live with people and actually going out of our little surroundings here. But that all depends on COVID and everything else that actually happens. So you might see us out on location somewhere. Which yep. could actually be quite fun to do it on location. <laughs> Especially battling the weather outside during the winter, Jane. That'll be a lot. Yeah, yeah, maybe we'll wait to the summer. <laughs> stay stay inside in the winter months. Um, if you've got any feedback, if you've got any comments or anything you'd really like us to see and like us to put together for you, just let us know, please, and we can actually put that into our programme. Yeah. Uh, Bradley will actually let everybody know in time when we're coming back live again. You will actually see that advertised all Absolutely. over Instagram and Facebook. And I think it's bye from both of us now, then, Bradley, it is. isn't it? Just uh, Thank you so much, everybody that's joined us this year. I know yeah, it's been thank a bit you for all your support. Crazy and, one, hasn't it? But and a happy Christmas to all of you. Yes. Yeah, and a happy New Year as well. Um, stay safe and healthy, and enjoy your time with your families or friends, whatever you do over the festive season. Uh, it's been lovely seeing you. What well, I don't see you, you actually, but, <laughs> but lovely speaking with you all. And thank you for supporting both Bradley and myself. Okay. And that's it. Yep. It's a so, wrap. Okay. Happy Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Bye.